In this video, we'll be looking at circular motion, focusing on horizontal or uniform circular motion. We have an object here moving around in a circle. Let's consider the physics of this motion. As it moves around, you can see it travels a circumference of 2 pi r, as shown by our red line here, the distance traveled in one complete cycle. It takes a time of one period to complete that cycle. So the speed, the traditional speed equation is distance divided by time. So for one cycle, the distance is 2 pi r and the time is period. So we know the speed of this object as it travels in a circular path is 2 pi r over t. Now this diagram I forgot to mention earlier is looking from a bird's eye view. This is a horizontal, if you like, um, an object moving around a circular path on the ground. So here's our first equation. The speed is 2 pi r over t, where r is the radius, and t is the period in seconds of one revolution or cycle. Let's consider now what happens if we were to subtract our vectors. We've got two points here, position 1 and position 2. We start with the initial velocity, which is a tangent to the path, or perpendicular to the radius. And then at some time later, we've got the object again with the final velocity, with which is a tangent to the path, and again perpendicular to the radius. So let's consider what would happen if we were to subtract these two vectors. Now this is v and u. So the change of velocity is the final, take away the initial. Okay, now you can't simply take away vectors, but what we can do is add the negative of this initial velocity. Now when we do that, our initial velocity moving to the right, when we work out the negative of it, it will move to the left. So now to find the change in velocity, we take our initial velocity v, and we add to it the negative of the u. So here we have v plus the negative of the u, which is effectively v take u. And we add them together. So we draw them, tail to head, then when we finish, tail to head, and then finally our final resultant vector is where we started from the initial tail to where we finish the final head. Now this is, if you like, an average from these two positions. So when we transfer this across to the average location, you can see the change in velocity is towards the center of the circular path. Now we've got a change in velocity in time, that effectively means this object is accelerating. Despite having a constant speed as it rotates around, um, a circular, an object undergoing circular horizontal uniform motion is accelerating towards the center. Now one equation that's new to us, a equals v squared on r, if we know the velocity and the radius we can work out the acceleration. Its units are meters per second squared, as traditional acceleration would be. Let's see, let's find another acceleration equation. This time we can take this velocity of 2 pi r and substitute it in where we have our v for v squared. So if we sub that in, we now have a equals in brackets 2 pi r over t squared over r. We can expand that by squaring everything in the brackets, so the 2 squared becomes 4, the pi squared becomes pi squared, and the r squared becomes r squared over t squared, all divided by r. Now when we take the t squared, the denominator down to the bottom of our overall fraction, we end up with a equals 4 pi squared r squared over t squared r. We've got two r terms here, so we can cancel out 1 squared against the r, and we have a new expression, the acceleration of a circular moving object is 4 pi squared r over t squared. Both equations are viable. This one is used when we have the velocity and the radius. The second one is used when we have the radius and the period. Let's now consider we can find another set of equations by considering Newton's second law, f equals ma. Now a is a vector, a is accelerating in towards the center, which means when we multiply it by the mass, the net force is also accelerating in towards the center. So an object that's moving with a constant speed as it rotates around in a circular path accelerates to the center and also has a net force towards the center. F equals ma. So if we multiply this particular equation up here by m, if we substitute in this a value in replacement of a, we substitute in v squared on r, we have a new equation called the F net mv squared on r. This is also called centripetal force, mv squared on r. Alternatively, we could have substituted in this statement or equation for a for the acceleration and now we have yet another equation f net equals four sorry m four pi squared r over t squared 
So here's a summary of all the equations that are available to an object that's moving in a horizontal circular motion. We've got its speed, its two equations for acceleration, and two equations to the net force. And of course, the net force and acceleration move in towards the center, and the speed of the object or the velocity is a tangent to the path or perpendicular to the radius. Let's look at some examples. Our first example, Kim has attached a ball of mass 0.2 of a kilogram to a piece of string of length 1.8 meters, effectively a radius of 1.8 meters, and is making it move in a horizontal circle on a frictionless surface. Kim gradually increases the speed v of the ball, there's v. The situation is shown from above in figure below. The string has a braking force of 4 newtons. It says calculate the greatest speed the ball can reach before the string breaks. So we're working out what's the maximum v when the string breaks at 4. Now important to note, this string is what's generating our net force, our mv squared on r. The tension of the string is what's creating the net force. It's frictionless, so there's no sideways friction on the ball. So let's have a look at solving this. We know the velocity, or actually we're trying to find the velocity, what's the maximum velocity. We know the mass is 0.2 of a kilogram. We know the radius is 1.8 meters. And we know the net force when the string breaks will be 4 newtons. That's the maximum force the string can exert on the system before it breaks. The net force for circular motion, or centripetal force, is mv squared on r. So 4 is the maximum force that's being exerted by the tension. This is the net force, the sum of other forces. In this case, it's only the tension that's generating this net force towards the center, so 4 newtons. The mass is 0.2. V is what we're trying to find, V squared, and we're substituting a radius of 1.8. I'm going to move that across to the left-hand side. 4 times 1.8 equals 0.2 by V squared. And then I'll divide the 0.2 over here. So I end up with v squared equals 4 by 1.8 divided by 0.2. Take the square root of all that and we find the velocity of this object at a force of 4 newtons when it breaks will be 6 meters per second. That is the maximum speed or velocity this particular ball can travel at. Second part of this question says when the ball is at position P, the string breaks. Draw an arrow on the figure from point P, indicating the direction in which the ball travels immediately after the string breaks. Well, just quickly, that's the radius, and we know the velocity is always perpendicular, and it's moving around an anticlockwise, so it would move straight down as seen in this diagram. Example 2. A motorcyclist is riding around a circle of radius 100 meters. The surface is flat and horizontal. The motorcyclist is traveling at a constant speed of 32 meters per second. The motorcycle with rider has a mass of 250 kilograms. Part A. What's the magnitude of the net force on the motorcycle with rider? So the net force equals question mark. The mass was 250 of the motorcycle with the rider. The radius is 100 meters. And the speed they're traveling is 32 meters per second. Centripetal force, the net force is equal to mv squared on r. Mass is 250. Velocity or speed is 32 meters per second. And the radius is 100. We sub that in. We find the net force on this motorcycle is 2,560 newtons. Finally, Draw an arrow to show the direction of the net force on the motorcycle. That should be part B. Well, again, we know that this is circular motion. So both the acceleration and the net force will be heading towards the center of curvature. Well, I hope this has been useful in terms of understanding circular motion in a horizontal plane or uniform circular motion. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.